This is Fairfax, and that is the silent movie theater. Was the silent movie theater. Now, that's another one of the most interesting stories in Los Angeles. It was originally built as a silent movie theater. It was the only silent movie theater in America that, sold, that showed solely showed silent movies. And it was uh, created by a couple who came here to find and restore silent movies. And I'm paraphrasing now, okay? But the, but the, uh, they would restore, they actually saved several silent movies from extinction. And the husband died from cancer as a result of the exposure to the chemicals that they used to preserve the movies. So he passed away and his wife locked the place up. And that was that. Now, a guy who was a student here at Fairfax High School by the name of Lawrence Austin endeared himself to the woman and convinced her to let him reopen it and ran it again as a silent movie theater. Now, this is the place where Charlie Chaplin would come to see his own movies, they say, and Clara Bow would come to see their own silent movies. Lawrence Austin ran this place almost single-handedly. He would uh, sell the tickets, he would tear the tickets, he would sell the popcorn, and, uh, oh, actually, no, they did have a candy counter girl, and he would go in front and he would introduce the movies, and there was an organist that would accompany the silent movies, and that guy was, his name's Bob something, he's buried at Hollywood Cemetery, too, and that guy's, both of them, Bob and, and uh, th I'm sure they were very nice guys, but they were scary as hell. Lawrence Austin reminded me of the Phantasm guy, and Bob, the, uh, the uh, silent, who actually was a real silent movie organist, accompanied movies, you know, back in the 20s, and, uh, would play here. And so anyway, Mr. Austin, who uh, had a boyfriend by the name of James, I think it was James Van Sickle, I think was his name. And this is January of 1997. And he was, Van Sickle was the projectionist. And he, um, it was January 17th, 1997, that a 25-year-old kid came here. They were showing a movie called, I think it was called Sunrise. And a kid came in and bought the ticket, and Mr. Austin greeted him and tore the ticket. Then he went to the candy counter, and uh, the woman at the candy counter, I forget her name, I forget her name, but he went down into the theater and started watching the movie. As soon as the movie actually started, he came out, and he asked the candy counter girl if he could buy a ticket to an advance, you know, an advance ticket to a movie. Well, she said, you gotta talk to Mr. Austin. He went up to Mr. Austin and shot him in the face. And then he shot the candy counter girl. And then he ran through the theater to the back exit and, went and got away. Now, he shot the candy counter girl, but he didn't kill her. He killed Mr. Austin, but he didn't kill the candy counter girl. And she was able to identify him. You know, they did a mock-up and they figured out who he was. And, and uh, in, in the meantime, it took a while for that to happen. In the meantime, you know, the projectionist, who was the boyfriend, was, uh, ex you know, distraught. They had memorial services all over Los Angeles, and Mr. Austin is buried at Forest Lawn Glendale on a hill, I think close to Tom Mix, which is, you know, appropriate because he loved movies. Anyhow, turns out the 25-year-old kid was found and he confessed that the projectionist boyfriend hired him to kill Mr. Austin. See, the lady who owned it originally willed this place to Mr. Austin. The property here is worth a fortune. Uh, the boyfriend thought he was going to inherit the, this property and ended up not. And the, it, the, I guess it turns out that the boyfriend projectionist paid the kid 20, I think 25,000 to kill Mr. Austin and another five to kill the candy counter girl. But didn't kill the candy counter girl and he was arrested and the James Van Sickle was arrested and they're both in prison. And Mr. Austin lays in his grave. And that place is crazy haunted. I did an episode of Ghost Adventures in there and we had full reign of the place. I was able to walk around and, and that's where I actually saw orbs in front of my face flying around. Not insects, but these, these, these were like, yeah, there was a lot of activity in that place. Uh, you may not believe in ghosts, and that's fine. I don't, I don't need to convince you. But uh, it was, it was haunted for sure. And there's the silent movie theater, another one of those amazing LA stories. Over the years, I've had several opportunities to see films and actually be involved with some events at the silent movie theater. You can see our hearse was there one night to help promote an organization's screening of Harold and Maude. 
The silent movie theater was legendary, of course, just by its reputation and being a silent movie theater and the scandal attached to it. But it was also legendary because their seats were often voted the most uncomfortable theater seats on the planet. They gave you little needlepoint pillows to sit on, but halfway through any presentation, your back was a twisted mess. But this is the place back in 2007, before it closed again. The silent movie theater has gone through several incarnations over the years uh, and also involved in scandal as well. I was able to visit the silent theater again in 2017 when I did an episode of a TV show called Ghost Adventures with Zach Baggins. And we were given free reign of the theater. The doors were thrown wide open and we were able to do an investigation in the theater. So here are some photographs I took in the theater during this investigation. And a lot of people give Ghost Adventures um, flack. They think that a lot of it's been fabricated. And I've done three episodes of Ghost Adventures. I've done one on the Hollywood sign. I've done one at the famous Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles, and this one. And I can tell you, I've never seen them fake anything. They will react pretty strongly to like subtle noises the entire production crew will just halt and whip their heads around any tiny noise so i know that they're a bit enthusiastic to find things but i've never ever seen them fake anything and the silent movie theater you know i can't explain it but i saw things in there that were kind of weird and i saw stuff flying around in front of my face i mean it was like little orbs you would say in a still image, but these things were circling in front of my face. It wasn't dust, it wasn't insects. You could, you know the difference. And it was, uh, it was bizarre, I'll tell you that. Now the setup within the lobby is a little bit different now. The candy counter has since been moved to a different area, but this is the exact location where Mr. Austin was murdered. If you go into the theater itself, you'll see that they have renovated it and those horrific seats have been changed to something a little bit more comfortable. I found a supply closet. I figured you might want to have a look in there. And I also got into the projection booth where Mr. Van Sickle, who was responsible for Lawrence Austin's murder, uh, was working that night showing films. But it was a lot of fun going there that day. And these are some photographs of the Ghost Adventures episode, including this little movie that I took, and this is the pathway that the killer, the one who actually shot Mr. Austin, uh, ran through the theater after murdering him to the back door where he escaped. What are you going to do? I guess we're going to have to just keep buying new jeans. This poster still hangs in the lobby of the silent movie theater, only steps from where Mr. Austin was murdered back in 1997. And it still reads, To all of you, we dedicate the movie. For as William DeMille has so aptly expressed in his Hollywood saga, the highest function of motion picture art is to express the people to themselves. The voice of the screen is the voice of common humanity trying to put into living words its thoughts and emotions, its ideals and its dreams. A lot of people have commentary about Mr. Austin and his personal life, but there's no doubt he had love in his heart for the motion picture, especially silent films. And he died really doing what he loved the most, celebrating silent films. So thank you, Mr. Austin, for your dedication to silent movies and to the silent movie theater i hope this building stays around forever who knows in los angeles anymore but i'm glad it's still there anyway so uh thank you all for joining me for this bizarre hollywood story i appreciate your time i appreciate your attention and until next time you heard me